All right. I guess this is my first tutorial. I don't know that I'm qualified for this kind of thing, but um, Jay, what's up? I'm actually um, in our front mudroom because I don't want to wake people up. I, I was having a hard time sleeping for some reason, but anyways, um, I'm trading text messages through WhatsApp with Vivek, and you know we were we were talking. He's at work, but um, this Entity Framework and the entity data model stuff i wanted to kind of like walk through that and um just sort of show a couple things that he's sharing with me um so the first is i i already just tested this out but anyways this edmx as i understand is kind of like the relationship diagram but using this ado.net entity framework um there's a lot of like helpers that are built into visual studio so you don't have to like you know, do everything in the code. I think it, um, doing stuff in the code, it seems like it's, you know, it's necessary at some point um, to learn it. But then again, in terms of more of like workflow, like let's say we have updates to the tables, well, how does that affect, you know, what we're doing with the model? How do we um, have that conversation, but have that link into, you know, what developers are doing? So here's a couple things that are little tricks or whatever. First of all, the entity framework has to be loaded, but if we just, um, so we're, we're on the EDMX, which is always under this models folder, right? And then when you're on, and we're on, uh, yeah, we're on this one right here. So when you right click and then you go update model from database, um, this is where it opens up this little helper and you know you can basically just any changes to your tables, it'll just boom, drop it into, um, you know, into uh, what you got here. Now, I don't know how far that carries through all the code. That would be something that we can sort of test. But my understanding is that it updates all your um, all your models. I'm not sure if it updates like your your CRUD stuff or um, you know the stuff that we've mocked up on the config side of things for the views, but. Um, okay, so that's good. And then the other kind of trick or whatever, if we wanted to create a new EDMX from scratch, like like let's say we, we use that site you recommended. I didn't get that link, by the way, but if we use that and then um, we have that script that, that creates the tables. We're like, okay, this is the model that we think is going to work, and we just, boom, these are our tables. Well, once we have the tables, we install Entity Framework on our server, then we go to... Um, you know, models, and then we can go to add, okay, ado.net in the data model, and then, you know, this would be like, you know, new model, um, you know, whatever. Okay, and then it has this little helper again, and this is where um, I think you can go from models to tables, but you can also go tables to models. Like we're going tables to models. I, well, I, like I think you can make changes to your EDMX or add fields or you know foreign keys and relationships and stuff, and then have that update in your tables. I'm not sure on that. And then also, what happens when you have data in there and you're trying to do that? I'm not, I'm not really that, that familiar with that. But anyways, good little helper. You know, it links up with your database. We got this connection string. Uh, that has to be correct. Um, have to have entity framework loaded, and then ship one. You know, just hit tables finish. And it's basically just going to create a new EMX guy. It's working. Okay. And that's it. So it's like our, our new relationship diagram. Um, and then I don't know that this is the case, but I think from that point on, we're working in controllers and views. And, you know, that's that's the part of, I guess, the development that I'm not really... So let's say we, we have an update to a table. We do that. Uh, we try to get as much detail as we can in terms of the table and stuff. But if we do need to add a table or add a field to a table or something like that. We kind of do this process. We document it best we can. And then, you know, we, I guess, check that in, but then be closely synced up and coordinated with, like, 
um, whoever's working on the controller view type stuff is kind of my thought. Let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm I'm new to all this stuff. So that's that's what I know right now.